Doctor. Evelyn Thorne checked her calculations for what must have been the hundredth time. Everything looked correct, all systems were go for the wormhole experiment. If successful, her team would make history by creating the first traversable wormhole. A tunnel through space-time that could allow near-instantaneous travel between two distant points. It was the stuff of science fiction, but after decades of research and trillions in funding, the impossible was about to become reality. Evelyn's hands trembled slightly as she entered the final activation codes. Around her in the cavernous underground lab, dozens of her fellow scientists and engineers waited with bated breath. This was the moment they had dedicated their lives to. Wormhole generator spinning up announced a computerized voice. Space-time curvature reaching critical levels. Wormhole forming in three, two, one. There was a blinding flash and a deep, bone-rattling thrum that seemed to shake the entire facility. Gasps echoed through the room as floating in the center of the high-tech apparatus was a shimmering sphere of warped space-time about three meters in diameter. Readings on the monitors confirmed it they had done it. The world's first wormhole was now stable and open. Applause and shouts of triumph erupted from the science team. Evelyn felt a huge smile spread across her face as she was hugged and high-fived by her ecstatic colleagues, but the celebration was cut short by a sudden blaring of alarms. Evelyn's eyes widened as she saw the reading something was emerging from the other side of the wormhole. She barely had time to shout a warning before a nightmarish creature burst forth from the shimmering portal. It was vaguely humanoid but horribly elongated, with skeletal limbs, sickly gray skin, and a bulbous head dominated by huge, almond-shaped black eyes. More of the beings poured out behind it, scrambling into the room on all fours and emitting high-pitched shrieks. Panic erupted as the science team fled for their lives. Armed security guards opened fire on the aliens, but their bullets seemed to have no effect bouncing off an invisible barrier. The creatures moved with blinding speed, leaping onto the guards and scientists and tearing into them with razor-sharp claws and teeth. Blood sprayed as screams of agony filled the air. Evelyn ran for the exit, her heart feeling like it would explode out of her chest. An alien loped alongside her, easily matching her pace. She saw its claws reach for her in her peripheral vision. This was it, she was dead. But at the last second, a security guard tackled the creature, smashing its skull with the butt of his rifle. Go, get out of here, he yelled. Evelyn didn't hesitate, sprinting for the elevator as the guard was dragged down by more of the monsters. She slammed her fist on the elevator button, praying it would arrive in time. Behind her, the bloodbath continued, the exit tunnel carpeted with the shredded remains of her friends and colleagues. Ding. The elevator arrived. Evelyn leapt inside and hit the button for the surface, jabbing it over and over until the doors slid shut. She collapsed against the wall, gasping for breath, her legs shaking uncontrollably. What had they done? What eldritch horror had they unleashed? Evelyn barely noticed when the elevator reached the surface. In a daze, she stumbled out into the desert night. She took out her cell phone she had to call for help, call in the army, anyone. But there was no signal. Of course not, they were miles from any cell tower out here. She looked back at the entrance to the underground lab, a wave of nausea rising in her throat as she pictured the carnage below, and froze. The alien creatures were pouring out of the open blast doors, their lithe forms skittering across the sand at incredible speed, and they had spotted her. Their shrieks echoed across the desert as they surged toward her. Evelyn ran. She had never run so hard in her life a primal survival instinct taking over and pushing her body to the limits. Her lungs and muscles screamed as she sprinted across the cooling sand and rock. She could hear the aliens behind her, hissing and shrieking, hungry for blood. Her blood. A lonely stretch of highway appeared ahead, her only hope. Flagging down a motorist was her one chance. But it was the middle of the night in the remote desert. What were the odds of a car passing by? Still, she had to try. Evelyn put on a last burst of speed toward the road, the creatures just seconds behind her. Headlights appeared in the distance, approaching fast. Evelyn frantically waved her arms, screaming for help. The car, an old rusty pickup truck, skidded to a halt, and a man leaned out the driver's side window. He was halfway through asking if she was all right when his eyes focused behind her and widened in horror. Evelyn felt claws sink into her back, heard the man's terrified scream and then everything went black. She awoke with a start, gasping, 
her clothes drenched in cold sweat. A familiar voice said her name and a kind-eyed, bearded face came into focus above her. Dave, she croaked. Her throat felt raw, like she had been screaming. Doctor. Dave Welling, her research partner and fiancé, squeezed her hand. You're okay, E.V. You're in the med bay. You had another nightmare and fell out of bed. Gave yourself a nasty bump on the head. How do you feel? Evelyn looked around the sterile white room, her heart still racing. I. What happened? The wormhole. The creatures. Dave frowned. Creatures? E.V., you haven't been in the lab for weeks, not since the accident, don't you remember? The wormhole destabilized and there was an explosion. You suffered a severe concussion. You've been on medical leave recovering. Evelyn blinked, confused. It had seemed so real. She could still hear the alien shrieks ringing in her ears. I know it's a lot, Dave said gently. The docs warned me your memories might be jumbled for a while. But don't worry, you're going to be okay. The project has been suspended indefinitely for a full investigation into what went wrong. Probably won't start up again, if at all, for months or years. Evelyn nodded slowly. Yes, that made sense. It had just been a terrible, vivid nightmare fueled by her concussion and trauma from the accident. She took a deep breath, trying to slow her racing heart. Dave helped her sit up and handed her a glass of water. She sipped it gratefully. You know, Dave said. In a way, it's lucky you got hurt and haven't been able to go back to the lab. With the project on hold, we actually have a chance to take that vacation we kept putting off. I was thinking a trip to the mountains. Get away from all this for a while. Clear your head. What do you say? Evelyn managed a smile. That sounds perfect. Let's do it. Life slowly returned to normal. Evelyn recovered and tried to put the nightmare of the accident behind her. She and Dave drove up to a lodge in the mountains and spent two peaceful weeks hiking through golden aspen forests and cuddling by the fire. But sometimes Evelyn would catch Dave looking at her oddly when he thought she wasn't paying attention, his expression unreadable. On their last day, they decided to take one more hike up to an isolated vista to watch the sunset. But as they sat together on an outcropping, the fading light casting long shadows through the trees, Dave turned to her, his face grim. Evelyn, there's something I need to tell you. I wanted to wait until you were fully recovered, but you deserve to know the truth. There was no accident. The wormhole experiment that day was a success. The creatures, they were real. All of it was real. Evelyn stared at him in shock, her blood turning to ice in her veins. What? But you said. I know. I'm sorry. The project leads decided it was too dangerous for the public to know the truth. Too many hard questions about where the aliens came from and what they were. We lost over 50 people that day. The official story is a lab accident. Everyone involved has been sworn to secrecy. Evelyn shook her head in horrified disbelief. So my nightmares. Memories, said Dave sadly. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. I hoped that maybe the concussion had suppressed them. That you could forget and move on. But I can't keep lying to you. Evelyn felt like she was going to be sick. It had all been real. Those terrible creatures, the slaughter, all of it. What happened to the aliens? Did they all die in the lab? Dave looked away. Most of them, yes, but not all. A handful escaped into the desert that night, including the ones that attacked you he took a shuddering breath. There's something else. By the time they medevaced you out and I got to the hospital, it was too late. Too late? What do you mean a horrible realization was dawning on Evelyn? She thought back to all the times over the past weeks when Dave had watched her with that odd, sad look when he thought she wasn't looking. Evelyn, my love, there were tears in Dave's eyes now. Your injuries that night were too severe. You were too far gone. You died on the operating table. No Evelyn stared at her shaking hands. That's impossible. I'm right here. We're talking. Dave reached out to take her hands in his. She yanked them away. His skin had felt cold. Alien. I couldn't lose you, Dave said, silvery fluid now leaking from the corners of his eyes and mouth. We couldn't lose you. So we saved you, after a fashion. Repaired your body and improved it. 
Evelyn leapt to her feet and stumbled away from him. What did you do to me? What are you? Dave stood, his expression one of apology and regret. His features began to morph and shift, elongating, bones popping hideously back into the inhuman shape from Evelyn's nightmares. More of the aliens emerged from the shadows of the trees, surrounding her. We are the Drexorians. When our scout ship came through the wormhole, we never imagined our new world's atmosphere would be so toxic to us. The others died quickly, but those of us who escaped slowly adapted. Evelyn looked at her hands again, really looked. Notice for the first time the pale gray tinge to her skin. As she watched in growing horror, her fingers began to lengthen, dark claws sprouting from the tips. A scream built in her throat but emerged as a piercing alien shriek. It all crashed in on her she hadn't survived that night in the desert. Yet she had, changed, altered, turned into one of them. The alien that had been Dave, still wearing his torn and bloodied clothing, reached a skeletal hand toward her. I'm sorry, my love, but look on the bright side we can be together forever now, and your human knowledge will be invaluable as we continue our species' new evolution on this world. Evelyn wailed, a keening cry that echoed through the mountains, no longer caring that the sound was utterly inhuman. She sank to her knees as reality crumbled around her, as the last shreds of her humanity slipped away. The Drexorians closed in around her, welcoming her into the fold. 